Sean Terriel, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. It has been a, a long day out here in upstate South Carolina. Upstate South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was in uh, North Carolina. Actually, I'm going to go back to – is is that uh, – is Greensboro, North Carolina? Greensboro, North Carolina is a good, like, three-hour drive from here. I'm, like, right near the border of North Carolina near Greenville, Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. Okay, yeah. I haven't really – only been over there once and now i am end up gonna go back there again um beautiful area though holy yeah it really is it looks actually exactly like your background that you oh have. yeah <laughs> yeah does upstate just mean north yeah north the yeah. northwestern part of the state it's really like the the mountains uh foothills of the mountains the uh blue ridge mountains but the brown is that close to the brown mountains I don't know. What? I, I don't think know the, the Blue Ridge, the Brown Mountains, might be in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Probably are. It's where that uh, phenomenon, the Brown Mountain Lights, comes from, where people see like UFOs, some kind of. I have area. not heard about that around here. If that's going on, I want to go check it out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that'd be where it is because it's like west to north, west to Asheville. So I'm assuming you can't be far from Asheville. Not at all. I'm like, not even an hour from Asheville. Yeah, so I'd assume it's west of you, which sounds like those mountains. Which so if, I'm sure if you like, if you just Googled like the Brown Mountain Lights, it would it would come up. I'm writing it down right now. I'm gonna go check that out. Let well, us know if you see. I used to live in uh, I used to live in Santa Cruz, California. If you guys have ever been there, so there's nothing there's nothing you could really say that would surprise me or shock me because I've heard it I've heard it and seen it all <laughs> out there. They're in, they're in North Carolina, it says. Uh, ghost lights, purported ghost lights near Brown Mountain in North Carolina. I bet there's some kind of a military base out there or dumb out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, totally. They're blaming it on ball lightning or something like that or some piezoelectric phenomena. <laughs> Have you guys ever dug into, I mean, I, I don't know if we want to go down this rabbit hole, but I mean, the reality of all this, the satellites from Starlink that are up in space right now in low, low orbit space, right? So think about that for a second. What all those satellites can do in addition to just providing internet access all over the place. What else could that many low orbit satellites do? everything everything man like project blue beam have you heard of project i know you guys probably yeah. know project oh, yeah. blue beam yeah like i'm just waiting for the alien the faux alien invasion to begin i know yeah i mean they've tested it you've seen those fake cities in the sky in china there's been all kinds of crazy religious stuff like you know apparitions i mean they can they can pretty much i think put a hologram out there and that's, you know, the thing we've talked about with Bluebeam is that it might not even be such an obvious uh, kind of physical sighting as much as like a destruction of a major city that they just blame on it, right? I mean, I think they've learned through COVID that they can pretty much do what they want and tell the majority of the people what they what they want and people will believe them. I mean, of course, there's probably a bigger percentage now, maybe 30 or 40% that won't believe them right away, but there's still a good core, 40, 50% that'll believe whatever they say on the TV. Yeah. Yep, the directed energy weapons that are melting entire communities and cities, and they're like, oh, it was a fire. It's like, yeah. no, no, fires don't melt metal like this. Yeah. But. So do you want to start, do you want to get into uh, maybe some of the ways you've been canceled? Or I, I definitely want to make sure we get into your, um, you know, your your digital privacy boot camp stuff, um, your Mark 37 in the first half, you know, Um you want to start off with that and then we can sort of dig into some of the the past or sure i mean it's it's the same as most people who have been kicked off of instagram or facebook or for me i got kicked off of linkedin that was really where i spent most of my time I was trying to wake people up on linkedin and they kept pushing out narratives on linkedin of all things which is supposed to be a business platform so I would just counter and I would ask questions. And I had 10,000 followers on LinkedIn um, and I was just asking questions and being direct and 
you know, simple things like, well, what was the president of Ukraine before he became the president of Ukraine? Um, you know, simple things like that. Well, what other genocides are going on in the world right now outside of uh, what's going on in in the Ukraine? Uh, what about the Uyghurs? What about Yemen? What about you know what's going on in Africa? I would just ask questions like this, and they one day I, I tried to log in in April of 22, and I couldn't log in. They refused to lo- let me log in, and not only that, I started calling my friends up, and they, I said, just see what you can find on me. They literally purged everything. I had numerous articles. I was constantly commenting and whatnot. Everything that I was ever associated with was removed, just disappeared. Wow. So even your co- your past comments and stuff were gone too? Yeah. Yep. Oh, shit. Everything gone. So they're just wiping the past. They're just, they're, oh my God, they're just changing history really. Yeah. They made me disappear from the platform entirely. Uh, so that was interesting. I mean, it was not entirely unexpected. I mean, when you realize that Microsoft is a major owner of LinkedIn and has been, and look at the board of the company and look at what the leadership looks like over there. I mean, it's not complicated. You follow the money, you figure out who has ownership. You look at the ethos of the people that have ownership and you understand how they're going to act and react. And all these big tech companies are in collusion with one another. They share information on a regular basis with one another. And I had been kicked off of Instagram for just asking questions about the JFK assassination of all things. Yeah. This is weird. Um, and I never really spent much time on Facebook. So when I got kicked off of Instagram, I got booted off of Facebook. I really didn't give a crap. But the uh, LinkedIn one for me was huge because I had a massive following. And my business in tech as a consultant in that space really got killed. And so I had people calling me up saying, why would you get off of Facebook? Or why would you get off of LinkedIn? And I was like, <laughs> it wasn't me, man. Um, so I basically set up a Substack account and started creating my own my own content and pushing my own stuff out. Um, Are you worried about that? I mean, I, I heard you mention something about your dot. You put dossiers up there and, and something happened. Yeah. And Substack of all places was supposed to be this bastion of free speech. Um, we have a company called intelligence on demand. If you go to Intel uh, you can see what's up there now, but originally it was up on Substack because it was super quick and easy for us to push all these dossiers that we had done. We had over 40 um, reports that we were generating about companies, technology companies and people and organizations uh, primarily because we wanted to scratch our own itch on a couple of these people and do some digging and figure out if they were really legit or just grifters uh, trying to, you know, throw Patriot in front of their name or their product and, try to get business. So we put that up on Substack and literally within a week, uh, we were taken down, told we had violated the terms of service. They never showed us or explained to us what or how we reached out to them numerous times, email, phone calls, messages, no response, nothing. Uh, Was it just that post that was taken down or was it your whole It was the entire site. It was our entire Substack. So then you had to go and create another one. So now you've got a different one that just has your sort of bio and stuff on there. Yeah. So truthandlove.substack.com has the articles that I've written over the years. I've migrated most of that stuff over to our website, mark37.com. If you go to the blog section there, uh, most of my articles have moved over there. But uh, So can you give us an example of some of the stuff you were like, let's say you're, so you're kind of deconstructing like people, new people in the freedom movement even, or, 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 or more sort of more about big tech and, and what's going on with some of the, the follow the follow the money type stuff. Both, both of that. Um, So, you know, the, the ones, the big ones that we had out uh, were Melaleuca. Have you guys heard of Melaleuca? I don't think I I think some people used to sell that shit door to door. Isn't that like Avon? Yeah, so they're supposed to be like homeopathic, natural um, products for your home and medicines and whatnot. Uh, there, what triggered me on it was, or made me interested in it, is I had a whole bunch of folks that I know who started pushing this thing called Patriot Switch. Have you heard of Patriot Switch? 
No, no, but so, my ex-wife was going to get into selling that Melaleuca at a time. And I was like, oh, this is just a pyramid scheme. We're not, you're not doing this. <laughs> so, yeah. So Patriot Switch came out and we're like, oh, this is interesting. You know, they're trying to be an alternative to all the crap you could buy from Walmart or Amazon. Um, this is interesting. This might be something that we want to get into. So I started digging into it and realized that Patriot Switch was just a, a brand, uh, a front facing brand within Melaleuca that someone had started. And so I was like, okay, that's not too big. I mean, any sales organization is a pyramid scheme at the end of the day, if you really look at it. Um, so that doesn't really frighten me or scare me off from it. I was like, well, let's look at Melaleuca. And most of the folks that I knew that were pushing Patriot Switch were like super hardcore MAGA, you know, Trump supporters. But when you look at Melaleuca and you look at the owner and founder of Melaleuca, the dude was like a vehement anti-Trumper. <laughs> vehement supporting most of the Republican establishment uh, players like Cheney and others. Um, and so I just started asking questions and I kept digging and I was like, well, that's weird. Dude's on record being interviewed, basically calling all Trump supporters morons, literally calling them morons. So I was like, this is weird. Uh, and then I started looking into their three offices. They've got two huge offices in Knoxville, and they've got one major office in Shanghai, China. And yet they have this big thing about being made in the USA, right? So when you really understand made in the USA, what does made in the USA mean? Well, you can take a whole bunch of product from Indonesia or Shanghai, China, have it shipped to the United States, then you can take that big vat of something that you've gotten and break it out into smaller pieces and throw another label on it in some new packaging and call it made in the USA. You can't call it manufactured in the USA because it wasn't manufactured in the USA, but you can call it made in the USA. So we just started pulling up articles and looking at the data and started asking questions about Patriot Switch and Melaleuca to some of the people who are making decent money selling Melaleuca that we know. And they went off the rails. I lost a couple friends because of it. Because they were like, oh, screw yeah. you, man. You can't, you know, you can't mess with my my living. It's no different than like any other company. You know, they they employ so many tens of thousands of US citizens, blah, 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 and have all these people work for them. Like, so does Google, so does Apple, so does NASA, so does you know, all these other intelligence, they employ a bunch of Americans too. But does that mean that we should support them? And I'm not saying that we shouldn't support these businesses. I'm just saying, be honest about how you're operating as a business. This is not that complicated. If the product is coming from overseas and you're bringing it into the United States and you're repackaging it and throwing another label on it and pushing out to the consumer as made in the USA, that's being dishonest. That's what yeah. I care about. Yeah. Just be honest about what you're doing. And if you're not doing that, then it's not hard for you to prove that you're not doing that and just show the data. Push it out there so that people know. So it's stuff like that that just drives me crazy. And people live in this la-la land that they don't do the flipping homework yeah. and follow the money. So anyway, that was a big one that I think probably people got pissed off at. And maybe someone threw some complaints into Substack. The other big one that we pushed out was about Ron DeSantis uh, and where the money was coming in for Ron DeSantis. Uh, people definitely didn't like the fact that we were pushing that information out. Um, I forget what the other ones were. Proton was it mail from the Jews. Hmm? Was it coming from the Jews? I don't know. I mean, who are the Jews, right? Well, the Israel lobby directly in this case. Yeah. Well, is is the Israel lobby really? Well, were Jewish? they supporting DeSantis? Huh? Was it were, were the Zionists supporting DeSantis? Is that who it was? Of course, hundred percent they were. But they're also supporting Trump. I mean, well, yeah, of course they are. They support the everybody. He has to do is go put his hand on the wall, just like everyone else. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So what, what? So did you did you get into the money behind Substack or anything like that? I mean, is there anything no, we should know about? Because we got my, my head has been down honestly over the last year and a half. Just try to be focused on trying to migrate as many people as possible off of Google and Apple and Microsoft and Amazon. Now, those are the four big ones, right? For you, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah, you add Facebook in the mix there too, and between those five companies, they generate over one trillion dollars annually. 
annually, those five companies make over a trillion dollars a year collectively. And they spend annually tens of billions of dollars on candidates, causes, and organizations that are literally directly trying to kill us right now. Not like make our life harder. They're literally trying to kill us, these companies and organizations. So when I hear people talking about, let's boycott Bud Light, let's boycott Ben and Jerry's, I'm like, you guys are out of your freaking mind because those companies are a drop in the bucket relative to these big companies that control the media, they control the narrative, they control the devices that you carry around in your pockets all day, every day. They see what you see, they hear what you hear, they know everything that you're doing, and you're obli people are oblivious to that too. It just that's what we need to focus on. So, and the reason I'm doing that now is because prior to this, I was working on companies building infrastructure companies because there's no point in worrying about the applications and the network and all this stuff if all of your data is sitting on their servers. If all of our stuff is sitting on Google servers, like your your show, right? That's sitting on YouTube, right? Which means it's sitting on Google servers. They can just go in and start turning you off whenever they want. So if you don't own and control the infrastructure layer and have that locked down and have people that are willing to fight to the death to defend your rights, First Amendment, Second Amendment, all of your amendments, right? your constitutional rights, then they can instantly just come in and make you disappear. So I knew from day one that we had to get that problem set solved for. Once that got solved for, I'm an entrepreneur at the end of the day, I moved on to the next major problem set, which is these things that we carry around in our pockets. Yeah. So to that end, let me ask you guys, if so we're at war right now, right? I agree. Born and I agree, 100%. Yeah. Right? So if we're at war and I give you a weapon, and I say, just so you know, that weapon that I just gave you has a GPS tracking device on it. It has a camera. It has a microphone. Uh, and the enemy, all that information is being fed to the enemy. And in addition to that, the enemy can actually get into that weapon and turn it off right before you think you want to use it, right, to do some serious damage. They can just turn it off. Would you use that thing? Uh, it depends on how addicted I am to it, I guess. I mean... <laughs> I, I, dude, we tried the Google. I, I mean, it's great to have you on and talk about this because we can get into some details here about it. But, yeah. um, you know, Darren's got us set up with our own servers too. So we are, we don't, we do have some, like we've, we've gone, you know, we, we do have a separate infrastructure for our podcast, for our audio, all that, all that. We do have a separate, separate thing set up. And, uh, you know, we tried the Google, we tried the no agenda phone. I don't know if you're familiar with no agenda, the podcast, it would really fit in well with what you're working on. They have like a whole no agenda phone thing. So it's that whole, you know, the phones that are sort of off the grid. And, um, I tried the, the pixel six with the, with the, I, uh, what was it? What was it again, Darren? The, uh, the graph. Yeah. Yep. And I just, man, I just couldn't, uh, actually, to be honest with you, the part of the problem was that the phone itself had a, a malfunctioning uh, screen. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't working properly. Well, that would be a big reason, man. It's that me giving that you would, a gun and saying, I pull the trigger, but only one time, every, times I pull the trigger, it's going to work. You wouldn't yeah, use it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was like it, seven out of 10 times it would work type thing. Yeah. And then, uh, like, yeah, so that was a bit frustrating, but also I had a hard time getting off of Apple, man. It, it was really hard. It, it is. But so I'm, you know, I totally agree with you. I just, I just have to do more work, you know, on my own to, to realize how important it is to get off it or, or, you know, to do something about it because well, I just, I'm, I'm going to give you know. some analogies, man. This is literally no different than this. This is like you saying, do we agree that Google and Apple and Microsoft and these companies are evil companies doing evil yeah. things? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is like you telling me how evil Pfizer is. Pfizer is an evil, horrible company. They're killing everybody. You know, they're just horrible evil company but hold on give me 30 minutes i gotta go get my booster shot well no 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 because it's a little more indirect right it's it's i know what you're saying it's a good it is a, a good analogy but it's hard because it's it's really you know it, there is going to come a time when they can just hunt me down but it, it's it's just hard to you know there's that faint hope that it's really not going to come to that you know we're going to fight but it's really not going to come to them using your phone to come and kill you yeah, but it's more than that. It's so much more than that. So first of all, the obstacle is the way, 
we need to get used to doing the hard things. That's why we live in the world that we live in today, because people have become so addicted to convenience. Yeah. You are addicted to the convenience. Once you acknowledge that and you can raise your hand and say, okay, I'm addicted to the convenience. My name is Sean Terrio. <laughs> I have a problem. I need to get out of this convenient mindset, right? Then you can start doing the hard things. Yes, it might take a little. It's like you don't just buy a raised bed and some seeds and become a master gardener. That's not how it works. You yeah. don't just hand someone a new assault rifle and say, great, now jump on the front lines of the war and you become a master marksman. It takes time. It takes yeah. training, right? Yeah. So you have to acknowledge and just know that what you're entering into is a journey. You're going to learn how to best utilize these tools, which have become weapons, right? These are weapons at the end of the day that are owned by the enemy. This should not be a weapon. This should be a tool that you own and you control, but you're not going to be able to do that unless you understand how this thing works and how to make it work for you. So I can promise you, Graham, there's nothing that you need to use this phone for that you can't do with a phone that work, that actually works, right? There's yeah. no app you can't use. There's no alternative application that's not a big tech app that you can't find and start using and figuring out how to use. You may have to spend like maybe 30 seconds more trying to figure something out, doing something than you're used to doing. But is your is your digital privacy and security worth more than that marginal convenience, right? Yeah. That's, that's really the question. Yeah. And the other piece is this, all of our data is being fed into this hive Borg mind that's shared by everybody, right? They're making money off of you all day, every day. The less data you feed them, the less money they can make off of you all day, every day. So to say, well, I hope it doesn't come to them like tracking me down through my phone. That's only one of the problems that we need to solve for. The other is the fact that they're literally monetizing you all the flipping time. Yeah. So you say something like you talk about, hey, I want to buy a new car. And then all of a sudden you start getting ads popping up everywhere about cars. And if you specifically say, I want a new Mustang, you'll get Mustang cars popping up. Right. That's insanity. That means that you your phone is listening to you all the time. Yeah. yeah. And that's brilliant from a marketing perspective. But that is being used from a psychological warfare perspective for completely different purposes that is literally changing our culture and has changed our culture and shaping the narrative for our species. Darren, you got anything? How do you, well, I, yeah, I'd like to hear more about this other phone because my biggest problem with that no agenda phone was it just wasn't, it wasn't feasible for me to run the businesses with it. You know, I've established a, a, a lot of freedom, a lot of autonomy and a lot of freedom um, with that fucking phone. So, and I, you know, I'm not a fan of it, but I am in some ways because I'm living a life that would have been impossible even for my father. You know, it's just the, the, the infrastructure wasn't this go to work, go to work, go to work. That's the, the option to make money is to get to punch that clock, to be there for that set amount of time and then come home and to do that day after day after day. Whereas, you know, I've managed to, to create a, a lifestyle where I can be with my kids more, take my kids to school, you know, work from my phone in a lot of instances. And when I was trying to switch that over to that no agenda phone, it was just, I was running into roadblocks constantly that I couldn't get past to do business. And that's really where my, my double-edged sword comes in is because it's like, for me, it's a, it's a business tool. It's a business tool that, that, basically almost single-handedly allows my lifestyle to exist for this brief window in time. And if I could find an, a better way to do that and be less trackable, but still be able to do, you know, all those conveniences, because for me, it's, it's not the 30 seconds. It's the fucking punch clock that I, I've managed to completely take out of my life and still enjoy, you know, uh, a, a good lifestyle where I can run companies. So what you're what the assumption is that the device as you were using it 
um, was unable to accomplish what you needed it to accomplish. And that may have been the case when you were using it. I don't know how long ago that was. Yeah, it might have changed quite a bit. Yeah, that was probably four or five years ago. Yeah, there's a bunch of different things that I wasn't able to do with it. I run three businesses off of this phone and a laptop that's running Linux right now. My whole business is open source, running on open source systems and operating systems. My whole team is the same. And I spend every day, literally my days are talking to folks like you and then working with customers who are making this migration happen and coaching them through, here's the tools and the applications that you need to be successful. And here's where to find them, how to get them up and running and how to get them working. Helping how do I reconcile that with like all of my business coming from Amazon and Spotify and YouTube and these sort of companies? I mean, not for this show. This show is... This this business is a direct to consumer show, so all of our money is comes from our members and stuff like that. But some of our other businesses, just to the nature of the industry, you're like, you know, that's you know, you're, you're, if you're doing audio books, there's two places to sell. Them, period. The I business. mean, you can pretend you're selling them other places, but you know, you're not. So I'm not saying that you don't still log into your Amazon account and you don't still try to sell your stuff through Amazon for as long as you can is they allow you to, right? But there's other, th this is, I, I just had this conversation with someone who has a coffee shop in Kentucky and she has her business on Facebook. And because she clicked and liked on something that was a second amendment related post, they literally closed her account down and shut her account down. Oh my God. So she's not on Facebook anymore. She's oh all distraught. God. She's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm gonna manage my business. You're literally building your business on someone else's property. Well, we're not definitely not doing that. We uh, we're not doing that. Our business is all over every place, open source and otherwise. We have our own servers for every podcast we put out. Yeah, but you were just telling me about Amazon. Well, and yeah, YouTube we and blah, blah, blah. because we sell our books every place else. We sell our books off of our own servers. We sell our books, you know, direct to consumer. Great. And we sell our books on Amazon and Spotify. And ninety nine percent of doing the sales. Keep doing that from Amazon and Spotify. So that's kind of when I say you can you can sell them other places, but you're not selling them. You know, it's one in every thousand sales comes from someplace other than Amazon or Spotify, unfortunately. So I guess my point was this with the whole Facebook uh, coffee shop lady. I asked her point blank. Do you have a database of your customers? And she said, I don't. I was like, that's the most fundamental like 101 lesson you need to relearn instead of depending on facebook to manage all that for you you need to start managing that she's like well i don't know where to do that there's so many different tools that are available that you can use to manage your customer base and proactively reach out to your customer base that's not owned by facebook that's yeah. not owned by TikTok. that's not owned by instagram that's not owned by these other companies if you want to continue to use those tools go for it you can still have facebook on your phone you can still have that app on your phone if you want to have it on your phone you can still do that but that's like me literally giving you a firearm training you on how to use the thing and then you taking the thing and instantly pointing it at your leg and shooting your leg right i can't prevent you from shooting yourself i can train you on all the smart ways to use this thing but you can still shoot yourself in the leg so what these phones and these devices do is they re they give you control of the device so that it's not doing anything on the back end that you haven't given it express permissions to do. So if you download Facebook and, and you click the I agree to the terms of service, it's not just instantly going to get access to everything on that device. You have to give it permission. It's going to say, I want access to your GPS, your contacts, your this, your that, your whatever. And you say, yep. Yep. Nope. 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 And if you click something that says no, and it says, well, I'm not going to work for you unless you give me these permissions. And it really doesn't need those permissions. You then have to ask yourself, do I really need this application on my device? Or is there another way that I can access this? Can I use my laptop? Can I use my browser to do this? Do I have to use my phone? Do I have to have TikTok on my phone? Or can I use my browser on my laptop to use that application. Can I apply this to any phone? Graphene OS right now only works, and it's hands down the most private and secure 
open source mobile operating system available in the market is only working on Pixel phones right now. I have a, I have, I actually am still using uh, no agenda phone. I still, I don't know where the phone is. It's around here somewhere, but it still has graphene on it. Um, you should update it, update it. Um, and let's have a conversation. I, so on my site, you can sign up for, I mean, for you, I'll spend however much time is needed, man. But I have people signing up for free 15 minute digital privacy consultations all the time. And this is what I do with people. I have this very conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good to see. It's good, it's good to get a test with you and see what it's like. So Darren, do some of those apps that weren't, they were, were they not working? Like some of the main, was it like an audible thing or like a, uh, a YouTube no, it wasn't thing. audible. It was more like, um, like, uh, you know, like banking and stuff like that. That was, and, and if it was working, it was, it was, if it would work, it was kind of sketchy, I guess, because it's like these, the developer, you know, there's, uh, there was like I couldn't really find a trusted developer for some of the stuff, and I didn't have a good source to tell me, you know, where to get this or that from. Because, I mean, shit, you start putting the different because we've got, I mean, I've got to get into PayPal all the time. I got to get into Stripe all all the time. I got to get into like three or four different payment processors constantly, and you know they 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 wouldn't work directly i don't think at the time stripe or paypal wouldn't work directly so i had to go yeah. through this other like box or something and i'm like well shit man this is like this is everything if someone gets access yeah. to the paypal we're 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 in real trouble fast so i'm like i'm i just had to pull back from that and then i got into the point where i was trying to just okay well i can do that when i can do that when i get home and but, you know, convenience sneaks in where it's like, you know, how you, you know, well, I guess you're doing a better job, obviously, and, than I am in some of those regards. But when when my phone's blowing up from a customer that wants something now, it just there becomes somewhere an excuse along the line that I'm just all right. Well, fuck it. Where's my fucking iPhone? Yeah. <laughs> and I have an iPhone that I'm stuck with for my day job anyway. So it's always just a matter of just turning that on. And and there it is. There's there's so many workarounds for that. Some people keep two phones. Um, I'm slowly weaning people off of needing two phones because you can install. So the reason why certain applications like banking applications, for example, won't work on the phone is because certain applications require Google Play services. Yeah, I think that was a big part of the problem was that Google Play that's, service. That's been resolved. So they effectively make it and allow you to install what's called a sandboxed Google Play services environment on the phone. So you can run Google apps that need Google Play services on the phone, but they're like in this quarantined environment so that they can't see or talk to anything else on the device. It's almost like a dual boot scenario on a laptop, if you've ever heard of that scenario, where you can run Linux and you can run Windows on the same machine at the same time, but none of those systems can see or talk to each other, right? Um, so you can still run Stripe, the Stripe app. You can still run, you know, whatever, whatever the app is, your banking app. I would say you don't need the app for your bank on your phone. You can go literally through your browser, use Brave Browser, go to www.whateveryourbankis.com, and you can do everything that you would need to do. The only thing you really can't do is do like the pictures of your checks without having that app on your phone. Um, but if that's the case, then what you do is you just put that app up in the Google Play Services sandbox environment on your phone, and you can use it. So the key is getting that operating system is so key because we, we can use all kinds of encryption to prevent a middleman person from taking that data and understanding what that data is. But it's literally rendered useless if I can see what you see on your side of the device, which you can if you're running an iOS, a Windows, Google, Android, Mac OS. If you're running those environments, people can hack in and see what you see and hear what you hear, which renders that encryption pointless and useless. That's like using an encrypted email service and then sending an email to someone who has a Gmail account and thinking that that email you just sent is not gonna be seen by Google. Well, by the very fact that you sent it to the Gmail account, it's now stored on, on Google servers. I, I ran a Linux computer for a long time and I ran into um, troubles finding 
digital audio workshops and stuff like that has that sort of stuff been resolved now is there good yes. uh, did audio and video editing there's some super powerful stuff i mean short answer is yes short answer is yes i can walk you through all kinds of fun stuff that's come up i mean there are so many pissed off libertarian um you know uh just people who don't trust our government and don't trust big tech people geeks across the country and around the world that have been working nonstop on developing these tools so that they're not involved in our daily life my whole job is just to be an aggregator of all of the coolest stuff and the best stuff that's out there that allows people to live digitally private sovereign lives and then pushing it out to those people so that they can use these tools to get off of big tech systems do you think the phone is enough? Like if I keep, if I'm keeping my, my MacBook in my office all the time and I'm only turning it on to record the show that is, you know, being broadcast anyway, and then being uploaded to the internet anyway, and then leaving that computer, you know, shut off in this room. Other than that, is the phone the real weak point? If I can, you know, keep that computer office sort of shut off when I'm not using it. I would say you should make it a goal to eventually migrate everything off, but start with the phone, get comfortable with the phone to the point where you're like, Oh, this really isn't as complicated as I thought it was going to be. And then when you make that leap to the laptop, you'll have that same experience. For me, it's a silly thing. It's the, it's honestly the trackpad. I've tried like five different um, laptops and I just can't find uh, anything with that with the trackpad that compares to and I even tried hacking the Apple trackpad into a different system and it lo like weirdly loses some of the fucking capabilities just enough to drive me nuts on my like workflow for editing but I've tried you know I I want to be a Linux I had the hack book or whatever they used to call it where I like hacked up this macbook and turned it into something else but you know i, I kind of fell out of practice with that when we first first started the show i was doing a ton of that linux stuff yeah, linux has come a long way especially over the last couple of years so much so that people who like are just technical noobs that just don't you know they call themselves i'm just not technically you know literate um you know my dad who just turned 77 um is using a linux laptop and he is technically illiterate and he doesn't even know the wiser we even have customers who will literally take the laptop of their spouse send it to us we'll load linux on it and we'll send it back to them and we'll set the environment up and their their files back on the thing make it look exactly like it was before and their spouse has no idea that anything has even changed <laughs> so it's it's become the, the user experience has become so simple and so easy there's now you don't have to learn how to script or code anything anymore um, I would look up Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. I would look up Zorin is like the super basic one that we put on most laptops for people. Can uh, you do Pop Mac? OS is another really good one. Huh? Can you do the Mac? The Mac yeah. computers now? Yes. Maybe? They're a little bit more difficult because you have to find like these custom drivers and there's only certain Linux um, editions that will run and work on, on MacBooks. Uh, but we just did a MacBook Air for someone. That was my problem. You know, I don't think I ever did get the sound working on that thing. I could never get the no. sound to fucking work. I just understandable, couldn't. man. That was totally the case. I would say four five, six years ago. It's it's come a long way, long way. You know, there's a yin and a yang to everything, right? As the tyranny is being pressed harder and harder and harder, there's a pushback that's coming as well. And people are innovating and being creative and finding loopholes and workarounds and different systems and different tools to be able to not have to deal with the bs and the crap that they're trying to shove down our throats so um for me it's it's exciting times i literally you know i was in silicon valley from 98 until 2016 so i was there for the end of the boom and the bust and the boom and the bust and the boom and the bust uh, but i literally feel like we're in similar times today for these types of tools and technologies as we were in the 90s when people were just starting to create the internet, right? Wow. Um, there's so many new, innovative, cool things that are coming out that there's no legislation that's gonna be able to be passed because the people who are creating legislation are they're morons. It's their staffers that literally do everything. And it's the special interest groups that just tell, that write the legislation and then pay off the individuals in or you know take the staffers to strip clubs and dinners and whatever to get them in their pocket or put them in compromising situations so they say look if you 
don't do this. We're going to really screw you. Um, they're morons. They have no idea what they're doing. So it's not a matter of legislation that's going to prevent us from doing what we're doing. It's a matter of the big infrastructure companies that control and own the internet uh, who are going to try to turn us off. But there's there's the catch-22 there. They can't do that to billions of people because then they lose the revenue stream, right? So they have to find these creative ways to try to make um, martyrs out of certain individuals or examples out of certain individuals that will try to scare other people from, from using it or doing it. But what's happening is like a Freudian suffering. What's happening is those individuals are being created as martyrs, which only creates more of a following and pisses more people off and gets more people saying, well, what the heck is this over here? Maybe we should be doing this. How does uh, how does RSS fit into this? And have you considered just doing like an old school RSS blog sort of thing in, in lieu of Substack? Because when we talk to guys like Adam Curry, he seems to think that's going to be a pretty hard technology to shut off. Uh, yes, I agree. My short answer. I think he's correct. I mean, you go back to the old the old days. I mean, this stuff does not need to be so complicated at the end of the day. Is there um who do you like for servers? Like when you say your own servers, are you talking like a server in your own closet? Because that starts to get hard when you're doing video to hundreds of thousand people or audio to hundreds of thousand people. Are there any companies that you recommend that have a better track record? Like we've I don't like to mention who we use anymore just because why, but uh, we did a lot of research. We, I would tell you off air, of course we could, that's a discussion we'd have over there recording, but uh, I'd be interested to actually ask you that question when we stop recording. But um, is there anyone you recommend? Because we went with who we thought had the best track record for defending um, that sort of thing. I'm sort of interested in your thoughts on servers. Um, there's a bunch of different companies that are out there today. Um, there's one that is a, so it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you need like just a GoDaddy type of equivalent um, and a place to park a domain and have your website hosted that has a team that can maybe jump in and help you configure some stuff and maybe build some web pages for you. Uh, there's a company called Liberation Tech, liberationtek.com. Uh, there's another one called Patmos Hosting, P-A-T-M-O-S Hosting. Uh, if you're actually a developer and you want like an Amazon Web Services equivalent to be able to spin infrastructure up and down on demand. Uh, there's a company called AmericanCloud.com. Uh, in fact, the CEO at American Cloud is my he's brother from another mother, uh, one of my best friends. Uh, he was my COO for years and years, and he went to be the CEO of that business. Um, Some of these are listed on your website, right? Mark 37? Yeah, correct. Mark37.com? Yeah, I've got an article called Boycott Big Tech Resources and Guidelines, and I dig into VPN providers, browsers, email providers, uh, hosting companies, you know, you, you name it, you know, companies that we've done homework with. And I spend my weekends, for the most part, to the chagrin of my wife these days, uh, traveling. Uh, thankfully, I got to bring a couple of my kids with me when I travel, but I'm going to events and conferences and doing trainings. So I get to break bread and meet these people. Uh, who run these companies on a regular basis and do interviews with them and make sure they are who they say they are, going back to what we were talking about earlier. Are they grifters or are they practicing what they preach? Um, but there's all kinds of different, there's other options out there too. It just really depends on what are you trying to accomplish? What do you need? Um, there's what another company called NetActuate. Like huh? For someone like us with, you know, a thousand podcast episodes and 50,000 people downloading them, you know, like what do, what, what do we need to sort of, handle that and then we like i think we're running about 400 gigs worth of audiobooks and podcasts right now to around fifty thousand people i would talk to the team at american cloud okay you set up because they own they own the data center they own the servers they own their network they've got a distributed network um they can sell you bare metal if you, that's all you need um they can they can basically if you know exactly what it is that you're wanting they'll just configure it set it up for you and let you go and then if you have issues and problems down the road they can also serve as like a sysadmin team on the back end for you is there any countries that are better than others 
to be to be hosted in if you're doing that sort of thing like are these u.s based or are they are they overseas or are they uh because the patriot act is kind of scary in america it's scary everywhere yeah yeah it is scary everywhere but you know for some reason some people seem to think that that america has some some despite its free speech laws ironically has some some ways to get at data that other countries might not share uh, i couldn't speak to the specifics of that you know i'm just sort of paraphrasing some things i've heard but uh, i know some other people that run some pretty big shows that in the u.s with like an 80 percent u.s market and they're not hosting in the u.s so that's an interesting there's an echo that just picked up all of a sudden i think the feds just started tapping into the, the call here um with that question due to five eyes i mean you guys know what five eyes is right yeah so all the different intel agencies for the major you know players around the world who share data with each other via five eyes it does not matter where your data is hosted and this is what we learned when we started digging into proton mail i don't know if you guys have heard of proton mail no but i was actually going to ask you about that yeah, yeah. They're supposed to be this bastion of free speech and, and encryption and whatnot. When you start digging into Proton Mail, you start to realize, well, why are they called Proton Mail in the first place? Well, it's because the executive team came out of CERN, which is interesting. <laughs> Follow the money and the players at CERN, and you realize that these people are complete freaking whack jobs. You know, I would say they're Luciferian whack jobs. Um, okay, so there's that. Well, 